Welcome back to our Force Unleashed lore play series. Last week we got through the prologue and met Galen Merrick, also known as Starkiller. When he was a very small child, he was taken as the secret apprentice to Darth Vader and hidden away on the Super Star Destroyer Executor while it was still under construction. Vader was brutal in his training, which was borderline torture, and rarely gave out encouragement. Actually, the scene of Vader knighting Starkiller was the first time he was ever referred to as an apprentice. He provided Galen with a lightsaber training droid named Proxy who was programmed to kill the boy by mimicking various Jedi and their combat abilities. Despite his lethal goal, Proxy and Galen developed a close friendship. Not only was Vader hard on Starkiller, but the boy was hard on himself. On one occasion, he had Proxy chain him up and keep him starving until he had successfully assembled a lightsaber through telekinesis. The experiment was a failure, but Galen felt that it did make him stronger. By this point in time, Merrick was the personal assassin of Darth Vader and was a devoted yet secret servant of the Empire. To carry out his missions, he was given the Rogue Shadow, which we see here. The woman is Juno Eclipse, and she was Starkiller's eighth pilot. The job had a high turnover rate as they were either killed in battle or executed by Vader. Juno was born on Coralag, the daughter of a teacher and a civil engineer. She lost her mother in a rebel attack when she was very young, causing her father to become an uncompromising Imperial Loyalist. In an attempt to win his approval, Juno became the youngest cadet to join the Imperial Academy at the age of 14. She graduated with honors and was heartbroken when her father didn't even attend her graduation ceremony. She found her way to our secret missions because of a stellar record as captain of the Black Eight Squadron, Vader's own elite unit. She was also one of the test pilots for the still-in-development TIE Advanced X-1. Vader found her to be an excellent but merciful pilot, so he reassigned her to us. Our current job is to find and kill Jedi Master Rom Kota. He fought in the Clone Wars but disliked the Clone Troopers, so he created his own militia. Without clones to execute Order 66, he survived and now desires to be found by making his presence known at a TIE fighter construction facility above Nar Shaddaa. This time around, we're forced to fight both Coda's militia and stormtroopers because Vader instructed us to make sure nobody survives the encounter. Coda's militia were generally made up of Clone Wars veterans from local forces, mercenary groups, or even separatist prisoners of war. They have remained mostly hidden for the past 16 years, but now they face us. They're armed with blaster rifles, stun batons, missile launchers, and thermal grenades. Their elite members have blaster cannons, and they are super annoying. Although we don't see them in this level, they even had some gunships and X-Wings. Like I mentioned before, we're fighting inside of a TIE fighter construction facility. It was operated by Cyanar Fleet Systems and turned out thousands of TIE fighters. The militia has planted explosives throughout the factory because its loss would be a major blow to the Empire, but their main goal was to draw out and kill Darth Vader. And I guess they set a number of traps for him, like this energy field. I'm not really sure what it is or what it does. Oh my god, he's gone! Just obliterated. That's awesome. They probably didn't take force pushing and throwing into account when they set this thing up. Of course, not everything we have to fight in here is a trap. Some are just part of the station, like this all-terrain construction transport. These things had small tractor beams that could lift large materials for construction, or for throwing at enemies. Keep in mind, they aren't automated, there are people operating them, so think about that while I do this. I don't have any commentary about this part, I just like vaporizing these dudes. Actually, you know what, I do have some commentary. It's been almost 10 years since I played this game, and I think it holds up pretty well. It can be a little repetitive, but this is cool. Fighting in a TIE Fighter construction facility where you can pick up and throw almost anything, and just little details and mechanics about the game are so fun. Like this, Galen just no-look blocks a blaster bolt with his hand. I do think within the universe of Star Wars, Starkiller is too powerful. But, in the context of just a game, this is a lot of fun. But back to lore, it's time to face Coda. He expresses disappointment that Vader didn't come himself, but also a little regret at having to kill a boy. I mean, not much regret, he still tries to take down the entire station just to kill us. But as we fall, Coda senses that our futures are intertwined before we throw him out the window and take his lightsaber. And fortunately, Juno knows exactly where we are somehow, and we get out too. 
then it's just a simple lie of a mission to Vader that Coda is most likely dead, and then it's on to mission number two. But we're gonna stop here for today. If you want to start this series over from the beginning, you can watch this playlist right here. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.